About a year ago, I got a chance to see one of the best field watches currently available with the Swiss watch company's Bunker. Now, this is a watch that I've mentioned a few times since that review, but that's because I think it's a watch a lot of people should know about. The design of the Bunker isn't anything groundbreaking. Basically, it's a standard World War II style field watch. But where the Bunker really stands out is in its build quality and the materials used. By using a lightweight titanium case, extra scratch resistant coating, a lot of AR on the sapphire, as well as a ton of loom on the dial, Swiss watch company created a near perfect automatic tool watch. And even more amazing, it was actually priced reasonably. Well, today we're going to take a look at the follow up to the Bunker. It's a Dirty Dozen inspired field watch that follows a lot of the same winning formula as that bunker. And as a result, it creates a near perfect go-to quartz watch. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're gonna take a look at the Swiss watch company ARC. Now, before we really jump into this one, I do have one quick thing to note, and that's that Swiss watch company provided the watch, and as far as I know, they're not gonna ask for it back, hence the promotional tag. That said, let's get to it, and let's first start off by talking about the specs. For the ARC, the Swiss watch company decided to go with a smaller watch than the Bunker, so the ARC is 38.5mm wide with a lug-to-lug -lug of 45.5, which is rather fitting considering that the design is inspired by the dirty dozen watches of World War II. The ARC is also very thin, sitting at 8.5mm with its flat sapphire crystal. Which is really amazing when you realize that this is still a rather durable piece, as Swiss watch company added an extra scratch resistant coating, 100 meters of water resistance, as well as a screwed down crown. It's also amazingly lightweight at 35 grams, and that's with its nylon strap. 35 grams is practically nothing these days, so this is easily a watch you can forget you're wearing throughout the day. Add all that up, and you have a great grab and go quartz watch. One that's ready to go anywhere and do pretty much anything, all while being thin enough that it won't catch on any clothing. The case design of the Arc is very similar to that of the Bunker. They're both made with grade 2 titanium, and they both have that extra scratch resistant coating, which should help keep some of those scratches at bay. Except here the Arc is a little smaller, as well as a little thinner just to accommodate that quartz movement. Basically the design we're looking at is very slim and streamlined. It's a case that has a brushed finish all over, as well as you have these short beveled edges on each of the lugs. Although the Swiss watch company also included drilled lugs with this one, which is always nice as it always makes strap changes easier. And personally, I'm a little impressed that they were able to do this on such a thin case. Overall, it's very utilitarian, very tool watch if you will, as this is a piece that's really pushing function over form. Which I think is also true when it comes to the case back as it has a very flat, flush case back, also in a brushed titanium with all the particulars. Considering a lot of the other case backs we've seen lately, this is a bit boring to look at, but there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Now, back to the front and at the right, we have a signed screw down crown. It is a little bit small, and I think it can be a little tight when you first start to unscrew it, but once you get it going, it's not very difficult to complete. Plus, since this is a quartz watch, you really shouldn't be fooling around with the crown quite as much as an automatic. Now, one thing that I already mentioned is that this has a flat sapphire crystal, which really is perfect for a grab-and-go quartz piece. But it's not just any flat sapphire crystal, as the Swiss watch company went a little bit crazy when it came to the AR coatings, as they added 16 layers to that crystal to ensure that the dial comes across crisp and clear. And just for reference, when I've seen someone else add AR, it's typically in the 3 to 6 layers. So 16 is a crazy amount. Moving on to the dial, the overall layout and design is rather straightforward, where I believe nothing here is applied and everything is printed on. With this particular colorway, we have a flat white dial giving a very clean look, which is then supplemented by black accents. There are really two main areas of focus. The first of which is the standard Arabic indicators that are surrounding the dial, which is followed by the sub second hand sitting just above the six. And it's those two elements that really give the arc a bit of a dirty dozen vibe. Although rather than the full train track chapter ring that most dirty dozen watches have, the Swiss watch company went for a more simpler streamlined chapter ring. It still acts and maintains a border framing the dial, 
but I think it overall gives the arc a cleaner look. I think the sub-second design is also a brilliant choice on the part of Swiss Watch Company, as it really helps differentiate it from the bunker. If all they were looking for was a cheap quartz watch, it would have been simple just to make a cheaper quartz version of the bunker. But thanks to that design choice, the Ark has a very different style and feel than the bunker, and therefore it can really stand on its own. I also think shrinking and reducing the second hand with a quartz watch was a smart idea. As by reducing the size of that second hand and really moving the focus away from it, they might have just reduced the incidences of quartz ticking induced rage that some are very vocally prone to on the internet. Now, as this is a Swiss made watch, you have that ever important branding just above the six. As well as just below the 12, we also have the Swiss watch company's brand name and logo. And this is one thing that I have heard consistently criticized among enthusiasts over the years. Some feel that it's too big, that it's too wordy, or maybe just too generic sounding. But it kind of is what it is. It's really their brand identity. And when you're dealing with a company that's been around since the late 90s, they're probably not going to change it as they have history with it. So it's just one of those things that you either have to take it or just leave it. The Arc also utilizes a sword style handset with an extended tip. The hands here are a bit flat, as well as they are brushed rather than polished. But overall, I think they look pretty good, or at least with this white dial, they do. And that brush design really enforces the tool watch nature of the arc. However, while I think they work with the design, they are a tad short for this dial. As I'd like to see the hour hand come closer to the Arabics, as well as that minute hand then further pushed into the chapter ring. And for the most part, that's really my only complaint when it comes to the design of the arc, except for the date of the three. The date of the three is a standard simple cutout, and for the price, that's perfectly appropriate. And considering that the small seconds is at the six, the positioning of the three for the date is ideal. However, the choice to go with a black date wheel is a distracting one. From a functional standpoint, I think it actually works rather well as the numbers are easy to read and make out as it boldly stands out. But it does boldly stand out. And from an aesthetic standpoint, I think it distracts and draws away your focus from the hands. Or at least they are here. The other colorways may be a bit more cohesive. And now that I'm thinking about it, one other negative point here against the arc is that there's really a lack of visual depth, as it has a flat dial with a very flat handset. And with this sub-second dial, there's no element here that's moving around the dial and really helping give you some sort of depth like you would have with a normal three-hander. I mean, looking at the watch, the only visual element that really helps out is a rather thick application of loom for the Arabics. Other than that, we're pretty much talking Florida here. Which, once again, just may reinforce the idea that the arc is really about function over, say, fashion. And that's why it really has a simple, clean, and effective design. It's really a straight tool watch at heart, and it wears that on its sleeve. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that after checking out all these macro shots, I was rather impressed at just how clean this watch is. How everything is just clean and crisp looking underneath that crystal. I mean, this is really how a watch should be. But how things should be is sometimes a rarity at the $200 price point. Another thing to note here is that just due to the crazy amount of loom used, the hands in the Arabics always have a bit of that outer-worldly green glow. I particularly love this, but other people may find it a bit distracting. Now, if you keep this thing in complete darkness, I think everything would look white. But just due to the copious amounts of loom, just a few seconds of light, and everything here is glowing green. And that's even before you turn the lights out. This thing is a very thin quartz torch. And that's because the Swiss watch company followed the bunker's lead by putting a crazy 20 layers of X1 grade Swiss Super Luminova on here. And I'm not just exaggerating on that either. Most brands don't actually tell you how much loom they use. And the ones that do, it's more like 10 or less. So the Swiss watch company using 20 layers really is a crazy amount. And what's crazier is that this is becoming a standard for them. So for a diver, this thing would be great, but for a field watch, it is fantastic. It's instantly nice and bright, and this is easily one that's going to last you throughout the night. 
which you can easily see in this longevity test, as it easily outlasts a Seiko Turtle. The one thing that I wish I had here was a bunker so that I can compare the two directly, but unfortunately I don't. But regardless of that, this is crazy good loom. Now, movement-wise, we are talking about a Ronda 6004D quartz movement. It's not one that I'm overly familiar with, but it is a pretty standard quartz movement that should give you about 40 months of battery life. And as for the strap, well, once again, Swiss watch company is pushing function over form by using their own brand of Velcro straps. They actually sell these for about 10 bucks, and I think they are easily worth it. Depending on the color of the strap and the color of the watch, they may look a little odd, but they are extremely comfortable as they're continuously adjustable and extremely lightweight, which when paired with the Arc is a perfect combination. As thin as this watch is and as lightweight as this combo is, you can easily put the Arc on and forget you're wearing it. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know that I always show the watch off in a variety of different straps, but I very rarely talk about other straps, but this is gonna be the exception because I found a great combination with the brown leather Timex Pay strap. And this is one that I reviewed just before the holidays. Over the holidays, I did a short road trip to Nashville, and I wound up using this combo a good majority of the time, and I think it's a perfect travel setup. As together, they're extremely lightweight and extremely comfortable, and I do think that that leather gives the watch a nicer look. But I did run into some harsher weather, and just as thin as this watch is, it made it really easy to wear underneath a jacket. Plus, the contactless payment feature of that Timex strap made it extremely convenient, as I could easily pay for gas or quick snacks on the road with just a quick flick of the wrist. Now, after the trip, I did move the Arc back to that nylon strap, but that Timex one is a combination I would recommend. As for value, the Swiss watch company is listing the Arc at $199, which overall I think is pretty good when you consider everything you're getting here. I mean, yes, there are a lot of quartz watches out there that are cheaper, but they're not gonna have the same build quality you have here, let alone the same premium components. In fact, price-wise, I'd say this is gonna be closer to some of the Seiko or Citizen quartz watches that are out there, but I'd still say that the build quality of the Arc is gonna be better than those. The only other watches that I've seen that I think would be a good comparison here would be to some of those from Vair. Now, in comparison, Vair's watches will be steel, and I think their cases will have a nicer finish. And as a result, it gives their watches a bit of a different feel than the Arc, and perhaps more of a balanced look. Whereas the Arc, with its brushed titanium, again, I feel like a broken record for saying this, but it's going for more function over form as the design philosophy. The Arc is really a no-nonsense, low-frills watch. Yet, it's one that's executed with higher-end materials that reinforce the durability and the tool watch nature of it. The Arc is really a watch that's more about being there for you when you need it, wherever that may be, than, say, showing off. And I think the only thing that the Arc may be missing would be a solar movement, as that way you'd never really have to worry about changing the batteries. Otherwise, I'd say it's a near-perfect go-to quartz watch, and if it's something you're interested in, it's definitely worth checking out. And who knows, maybe that solar movement thing is something they can do later on. But in the meantime, as usual, let me know down in the comments what you think about the Swiss watch company's ARC, or if you can think of any other great grab-and-go quartz watches that are out there, ones that would be perfect for EDC. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. Till next time.